So, just bear with me a moment here. This diagram, while it might look complicated, is not that complicated. Let's just pick a small area element, the one that I'm shading in here. Let's say this is a, a square area element. Now, if we vary, if we just hold Y and Z constant and vary X, let's say we go from here right up to here, what we'll do is we will sweep out a tube or we will sweep out a volume which looks like a, uh, a, an angular tube like that. And this, this particular shape, of course, is inside the volume V, which is bounded by the surface S. Now, what we are going to consider are various cubic elements, S sub I, a function, of course, of X, Y, and Z. Because this, this uh, shape which we're sweeping out here can clearly be broken down into a series of cubes, S, sub, uh, S a function of X, Y, and Z. So let's say, for example, I have illustrated four such uh, elements here. We have F, S1, S2, excuse me, S3, S4, S sub n. Notice, of course, we are keeping Y and Z fixed and varying X. Now what we are going to do is select one of these particular cubes and just have a look at it in greater detail. So we're going to follow this down. So the volume of this particular, uh, the volume bound by this particular surface is going to be equal to delta x, delta y, delta z, or the change in volume is going to be delta x, delta y, delta z. That's just one of these particular cubes. Now, they don't necessarily have to be cubic, of course, but it's easier for us to think about them as cubes. Now, it's important to look at the normal component. Now, let's remind us why it's important to do so. So let's imagine that we have a, a window pane here like this. There's our window pane and the rain is falling against our window pane like this. So any rain that comes down here can be broken up into having, let's say, a perpendicular component like this and a parallel component like this. Now, of course, all of the parallel components will not have rain, will say, penetrate your window if it was open. It would only be the perpendicular components or the components normal to your surface. So in order for us to look at flux or flow through a surface, we need to look at the perpendicular components or the normal components. So we're just going to look at this particular volume here in greater depth. Now we're varying along the X axis for the moment, keeping Y and Z fixed. Now, I've said a moment ago that positive X is in this particular direction here. So if you look at the face, which is shaded in, in blue, the normal component will be outward towards you, the viewer. Now, but that is, that is negative i hat. So the normal vector is negative i hat. Whereas if you're in the, the face, which I'm currently shading in in red, the normal vector there is going to be positive i hat. That is the outward normal, positive i hat. So at the face, which is at x is equal to x sub one, we have the normal negative i hat. And at the face x is equal to x sub one plus delta x, we have a positive i hat normal vector to the face. Now, the infinitesimal surface area element, delta z, delta y, that's the scalar surface area element. The vector surface area element is delta y, delta z, n hat. And that's either gonna be plus or minus, that should be a plus or minus, delta z, delta y, I hat for reasons we've explained already. So let us consider the flux through any of the plus or minus delta z delta y i hat faces as we vary x. Remember the flux is the closed surface integral of a dot ds, but ds is the vector area or n hat ds. n hat is the outward normal. So as, as you analyze the total flux, we're going to get some cancellation. And I'm going to describe that right now. 